XUX. This is uh, 2020 all-wheel drive transit cargo, uh, cargo van and passenger van. This is uh, a little dated, but uh, the new updates to the Ford uh, transit van are going to be electric, and they're they're not releasing any, uh, you know, there's like five of them in production or out to FedEx. I just wanted to try to get this started here. Um, this is a presentation by Ford. I'm going to just let this play for one minute uh, at a trade show, Fleet and Truck uh, Leasing Management Magazine trade show. Let's just uh, play a, a few minutes of this, and I'm going to comment, pause, and comment on it. Hi, I'm Tiffany Chang, and I'm the Ford Transit brand manager, and I'm so excited to share with you our new 2020 Transit. Transit's done really well over the last couple of years. We're the world's best-selling cargo van, and this next model really steps up the game. The okay, so number one selling Transit van. Again, their e-version of this, to the best of my knowledge, is not in production yet. And, um, like I said, I believe there are five of them. The, the latest information I could find is that there are like five of them uh, out, uh, the E versions of these. So they're not in full production. Uh, the CEO of Ford wants to compete on the Mustang F-150 and this Transit van. And, um, of course, Lordstown Motors has this same van in the wings basically ready to go uh had they have followed uh, the previous schedule um uh, before the foxconn deal um this van would have been uh, prototyping and heading towards production right now they do have the stamping dies for the, the body panels of this van it's built on the endurance platform now, I want to remind you that the Endurance platform is four-wheel drive, uh, hub motors, uh, low-height uh, vehicle, a uh, battery electric vehicle, which the, the platform is already homologated and certified. Uh, it just would be the uh, body uh, panels and so forth. So the body construction would be the uh, additional certification needed but let's just hear what they have to say about what the customers have demanded with this Ford van. The very first breaking news I have to share with you is that Transit has an available all-wheel drive. This has been a huge want from our customers. We know that they need something that gets them through challenging driving and weather conditions and we're so proud to be able to deliver this. So what this does is an intelligent all-wheel drive always on system meant to provide enhanced traction in icy, muddy, snowy conditions and it really gives our customers that on-road confidence. Okay. So, that is exactly the endurance. Um, will the E version of this Ford Transit be four-wheel drive? Uh, like the F-150 Lightning? I don't know. Uh, I think they're going to have to raise the, uh, the height of the bed of, of the floor in this truck a lot. Uh, to uh, accommodate a rear motor and um, again I think that uh, you're going to have the uh, independent uh, rear suspension which is going to be you know problematic for a real truck. Uh, let's just uh, pause this for a minute till I can get to the next section. Alright in this section she's talking about uh, the low load load for which I do not believe Ford is going to be able to maintain in an e vehicle because of their drive system. The hub motor is superior here. Let's see what they have to say. Which means that we were able to preserve and maintain some of the things that our customers currently love about our transit, including the low load floor and the ride height. And that allows for easy ingress and egress. And what that does is minimize driver fatigue throughout the day. When and I believe they're going to have to sacrifice this. Um, and I do not believe 
uh, the Lord's time endurance high top fan is going to have to. I think this is going to be a competitive advantage uh, for Lordstown. And let's just let this play a minute further. I have some more information to put in here. When you think about our commercial customers, they're in and out of the vehicle dozens of times a day. You know, they really need to make sure that they are not sacrificing comfort for that capability which we're able to offer them. We are coming out with two all-new engines. We have a 3.5 p Okay, they're just talking here about the, and they've invested substantially in the ICE drivetrains for this vehicle and updating the ICE drivetrains for this vehicle. And where's the BEV Ford vehicle? We don't know. I can't, you know, uh, the CEO of Ford is talking a lot, but we're not seeing, I'm not finding the information uh, about the progress on this vehicle for Ford. And they just fired all the engineers that worked on the uh, F-150. They're coming out with a completely new electric platform for 2025. I think their design on this van is going to be a stopgap at best, like the Ford uh, F-150, and um, I think it's going to be heavy, and it's going to burn tires like the Ford F-150 is. All right, this is a uh, state of the fleet industry. This is a great uh, Bob uh, Business Media. This is the editor of Automotive Fleet Magazine. And this is his 2023 uh, evaluation of the market. 2023, to be a catch-up year for missed and canceled fleet orders. To say this is bullish for fleet vehicles is an understatement. But uh, let's just play a few samples of this. I'll put a link in the description. Indications, all indications are that demand for fleet vehicles during the 2023 ordering cycle will be extremely strong, primarily because of the huge pent-up demand created by the shorter ordering windows in 2021 and 2022 that resulted in the acceleration of early order deadline dates, the cancellation of accepted orders, and allocation restrictions for certain high-demand fleet vehicles, all of which has created a pent-up demand for replacement vehicles that this industry has never seen before. Okay. I don't know if we can get much more bullish than that. My Now, he's talking mainly about ICE vehicles. He doesn't really do a breakdown for battery electric vehicles here. My research has shown that the last survey of fleet managers indicated that they planned on uh, converting... 30% of their new orders to battery electric vehicles. Let's just move on here to this next section. That's very bullish. Many fleet managers anticipate this catch-up ordering cycle will continue for the next several model years. So barring any unforeseen developments, these fleet managers say they don't anticipate returning to normal replacement cycles until model year 2025. So, <coughs> I don't know what else to tell you about that. I don't know if it could be more bullish for a fleet vehicle. Now, what they are talking about here as, uh, let's just preview this chapter a little bit. Um, what they're talking about here is fleet vehicles, and he's putting an emphasis on vans, but of course, pickup trucks are part of this as well. How confident are fleet managers that they will receive all of the 2023 vehicles they actually order? Based on what I'm told, there is a high degree of pessimism among fleet managers as to the likelihood they will have everything they ordered actually built and delivered to them in this model year. And of course, this isn't a monolithic response. I mean, I got a range of responses that went across the full spectrum that included many who said they have high confidence that they'll get all of the vehicles that they ordered. But the majority of the responses from fleet managers skewed in the other direction. And here are some examples. Quote, I have no confidence in receiving my entire 2023 order. And I base this on recent history. I've had orders canceled now for two years in a row end quote. Or consider this, quote, 
I am skeptical about getting everything I ordered because retail sales are taking priority over fleet sales. Plus, I'm also competing with other fleets for the same vehicles for the same volume, end quote. And while other fleet managers believe that the vehicles they ordered will be built, they're concerned about very long order to deliver. Okay, I want to add to this that you read those quotes. Ford is the dominant player in the fee- in this field. They can't even get ICE vehicles out, let alone battery electric vehicles. Uh, I believe this leaves a giant opening in the market for Lordstown Foxconn to move right in. And whether that's with the uh, Lordstown high top van, which I need think they need to expedite. And additionally, uh, the two MIH program uh, fleet vehicles that uh, Lordstown is proposing to Foxconn as the joint venture. Guys, uh, let's just go I've over this much next section. Orders, but I also believe that there will be a limitation on actual deliveries from our orders for large vans, end quote. And other professionals agree with this assessment. So here's another quote. Quote, the U.S. desperately needs more options for large and small vans in both cargo and passenger configurations, end of quote. And yet another quote, quote, manufacturers canceling orders months after they've been accepted is incredibly frustrating to all end users and puts pressures on FMCs to find potential solutions. The lack of product and long lead times for the past several years has been challenging to say the least, end of quote. Okay, um, I'm not going to beat a dead horse with this section. I think you can see that although they're putting an emphasis on um, vans here, uh, and I do think the Lordstown High Top Van is so important at this point in time. Um, I think the same can be said for pickup trucks, um, which uh, are hard to break out of the fleet numbers, okay? But they are significant. Uh, but as you can see here, the van is is by far um, seems to be the pivot point in this market. Guys, let's do this joint venture. Let's get this done. Lordstown, Foxconn, uh, I think there's a opportunity here. Everyone else is falling down in the van market. And I just want to go through this section here real quickly. And again, the link to this will be in the description. This is the solution these fleet managers are seeking to use to get their orders filled, to fill the needs they have for these fleet vehicles. A significant volume of production for high demand fleet vehicles. So how are fleets coping with these ordering constraints? So, and how do they plan to do so in the 2023 model year? So one ongoing strategy is to maximize actual deliveries has been to move away from sole sourcing and to expand the number of OEMs from whom they source replacement vehicles. Uh, translate that. Forget about Ford. They ain't getting the job done. They ain't getting the job done in ICE, and they ain't getting the job done on BEVs. They're not even close. So here's a quote that uh, illustrates this. The reality is that we will most likely have to order from several different OEMs if we want to meet our order numbers, end quote. And another strategy being employed by some fleets is to elevate their 2023 fleet order volume, assuming that, oh, that even though some of these orders will be canceled, the net result would be actual deliveries closer to what they actually need. So here's one example cited by a fleet manager, quote, I believe many fleet managers are going to order at the high end of their order volume for 2023 models. The reality is that they will most likely need to continue this ramped up ordering for another two years to fully catch up, end of quote. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to put this video on to give people an idea of how, how big of a hole there is in this market and uh, how uh, Lordstown Motors 
is in a position to fill that hole and we're all waiting for the first quarter uh call but uh i think that uh you know people haven't looked closely enough at this and you have to realize on the battery electric vehicle front ford is done taking orders this is what he's talking about here and um their battery electric van nowhere rivian's battery electric van nowhere um you know there's small niche manufacturers but um there's an opportunity here for lordstown to make a major move into both these markets and i think this makes a case for the van again steve burns was right on the money of course he worked at workhorse previously was his company so he also understood the uh, delivery van market so this is all uh in the dna of lordstown motors and really all they need to do is start production and launch these vehicles um there there is really um no competition right now now as long as foxconn can source the batteries and so forth boy oh boy there is a great opportunity here okay this is just the final little snippet from this uh presentation <clears throat> talking about fleets and fleet managers and their relationship with oems purchase vehicles in good times and bad so making fleets suffer the cost of no incentives because the market is booming will come back to haunt them when the bottom falls out and fleets are the only ones buying. The OEMs need to look at the long game, end quote. And I am personally confident that the fleet industry will find a way to alleviate or work around these ordering constraints confronting us today. Nonetheless, all of these sourcing difficulties for the past two years has created a very stressful situation for fleet managers, suppliers, and OEM fleet account executives. In fact, I'd like to give a shout out to all of the OEM fleet account executives who are in a very tough situation, perhaps the toughest in their entire career, but who are making the best of it. So a word of appreciation to the fleet account executives who are in regular communication with our clients, who are transparent, and who are genuinely trying to help their fleets, clients meet their product needs. And I don't believe enough credit's been given to the OEM fleet account executives who are making the best of it during these really unprecedented times. Nevertheless, today is a stressful time for everybody in the fleet industry, and this is best captured in the following quote from one longtime fleet manager. Quote, in my 25-year career, I have never been so stressed in sourcing vehicles as I've been for the past two years, end quote. Okay, I think we're going to end it there. Ah, I don't know. This is pretty black and white. So let's see what uh, the earnings call uh, has to say about the joint venture. Um, I, there's a massive case for this. Uh, also for the purchase agreement, uh, we have no confirmation on anything, although the breadcrumbs are saying everything's going to go through. I'm hoping to get this video out before the call, but uh, should it come out after the call, we can all hope for a positive outcome on that. But as you can see here, um, as I say, there is a giant pile of money on the table. Uh, if these guys can just uh, get it together and do this deal, what the heck is taking you? What, how can you even think twice about this? Foxconn, come on. Or Lordstown. I mean, I don't know whoever's in the middle of all this. We're going to have to trust our executives at uh, Lordstown, and I do. And, um, you know, we have moved. Uh, again, one quarter is four years at Lordstown, and we've moved from a startup management team to a professional management team. Hightower is a uh, giant in this industry, and uh, DJ Dan, CEO Dan, is you know, you know, icon capo. So we got the right people in. Chance favors the prepared mind. We're prepared here. Lordstown is prepared to take advantage of this, and with the partnership with. Foxconn, they should be able to ramp up. And, you know, 
they're in a position to actually capture, in my opinion, if they can supply these domestic clients in the United States with these fleet vehicles, battery electric fleet vehicles, I mean, they have a chance here to dominate this entire market segment. Uh, they can establish a market share, deliver uh, well thought out vehicles which are already on the drawing board. I mean, this is a massive opportunity. And um, I think it's got money written all over it. All right.